Hi to all you scientists out there. I'm Paige Kelpine, an 8th grade science teacher at Carl Albert Middle School and an OERB master teacher. Today's lesson, Sound Thinking, is brought to you by the people of Oklahoma Oil and Natural Gas. Have you ever wondered what it takes to make a sound? Or how objects can make so many different sounds? What makes objects sound higher? Or lower? Louder! Today we're going to figure out how to make sounds, how sounds travel, and how sounds are received. Let's investigate. In my house, the kitchen can be a pretty noisy place. I found some common kitchen items to make noises with. With safety in mind, I won't use anything sharp and I'll use glass with caution. Pause this video now and collect a few safe kitchen objects for yourself. In my kitchen, I found a pan, bowls, a spoon, a big rubber band, and a glass of water in case I get thirsty. I wonder what sounds I can make with all of these. That was a lot of noise. To begin our investigation of sound, it makes sense to start with how to make a sound. Take a few seconds to think about what all of these objects making sound have in common. What were you thinking? Did you notice that for any of these things to make sound, we had to hit them or pull them? We had to apply a force. Think about other things that make sounds. Musical instruments, a door slamming, or even my hands clapping together. Do other objects make sound when they get hit? What else do you notice about objects when they make sounds? Do you feel anything? Can you see anything? What if you could slow it down, like slow motion? Pause here and investigate more. Sound check. We know that in order for a sound to happen, something has to be hit like a drum or my hands or pulled like a rubber band or a guitar. A force must be applied. And when we feel these objects or watch closely when we hear the sounds, we can feel them and sometimes even see them moving back and forth. Now that we know how to make a sound, can we make different sounds with the same objects? First, let's focus on making louder and softer sounds. Hit two of your objects together. Can you make a louder sound? Try it. To make a sound louder, we have to hit it harder, or there has to be more force. Predict what would happen if we use less force, or if we don't hit the objects as hard. Test your prediction now. Was your prediction correct? If we hit the objects with less force, the sound is right, softer. Now let's try making the sounds higher or lower, changing their pitch. This one is a little tricky. Here I have two metal bowls, two different sizes. What do you think will happen if I hit them with the same amount of force? Do you think they will have the same loudness? What about the same pitch? The bigger bowl had a lower pitch and the smaller bowl had a higher pitch. When I stretch my rubber band across this bowl, I can pull on it to make a sound. You may have done this before. How do you think I could change the pitch of the rubber band? Are you thinking that if I hold it closer to the center, it might make a different sound?
The shorter rubber band has a higher pitch than the longer rubber band. What did we change to make higher and lower pitches? Yes, the size of the objects, bigger versus smaller bowls, and longer versus shorter rubber bands. Can you think of other ways to change the pitch of an object? Brainstorm your ideas and pause the video and test Sound check. We made sounds by applying a force. And we can make louder or softer sounds by applying more or less force. Higher and lower pitch sounds can be made when we make objects smaller or shorter or bigger or longer. When we made sounds with our kitchen objects, we applied a force and we could feel them vibrate or move back and forth. The energy we used to apply the force was transferred to the object, then the object started to vibrate. But how does the sound travel? First, we must explore what sounds travel through. Have you ever heard someone say that you can't hear sounds in space because there's no air? It's true, because sound needs something to travel through. We call that a medium. Sounds can travel through matter, solids, liquids, and gases, because matter is made of particles. If we could zoom in on the tiny particles of matter around any object that is moving back and forth, we could see that the particles are also vibrating. When our sound source object hits the particles near it, it sets off a kind of chain reaction. One particle starts to vibrate and then bumps into another one, and this continues all the way through the medium. I've shared with you that sounds need a medium to travel. Have you ever heard sounds underwater? Through a solid? Try this at home. Investigate around your home to see if you can detect sounds as they travel through different media. You might hit a couple of rocks or solid objects together underwater. Are you able to hear the sound? What if you make a sound on one side of a wall? Can someone else hear you on the other side? Talk about what you found out with someone in your home. Sound check. Let's see what we've learned. Once an object is vibrating, it collides with the particles of matter around it, creating a chain reaction through the medium. But hold your spoon, scientists. That's not all there is. Now that we've made sounds and we know how they travel through a medium, we should investigate how sounds are received. If an object vibrates when it's making a sound and the matter around the object is vibrating too, what happens as sounds are detected by something? First, make a prediction. What happens to the sound receiver when sounds are made? For this investigation, you'll need a bowl, metal or glass works best, plastic wrap, a pan, spoon, and either salt, sugar, rice, or sprinkles. Stretch your plastic wrap tightly across the bowl like this. You'll see I had to use a rubber band to keep mine really tight. Carefully sprinkle the salt, sugar, rice, or sprinkles on the plastic wrap. Hold your pan and spoon near the bowl and make some noise like you know how. Think about what you see. What is happening to the receiver, this plastic wrap, when you're making the sound? Record a video, maybe even slow motion, or draw a series of pictures to show what you observed. Include a possible explanation for what you observed. Share your ideas with someone in your home. Then experiment by placing your pan in different locations around the bowl. Notice anything different? Post your videos or pictures to Facebook or Instagram and tag at OERBOK and you could win a prize. 
let's hear from OERB's fun classroom scientist, Leo, about how the oil and natural gas industry use sound to locate possible drilling locations. Professor Leo here with my newly portable assistant, Piper. Greetings, Professor. Today, Piper and I are going to take you and your fellow classmates on a virtual field trip, which is a more clever way of saying you're about to watch a video. So pay attention. Some kids actually have to go outside for this stuff. You with me? Fantastic. What would you think if I told you we can see things underground without ever digging a hole? Like an animal that lives underground. <laughs> no, Piper, don't be ridiculous. Like Superman. Now, for those of us without x-ray vision, we have the Thumper Truck. No, it does not contain talking cartoon bunnies. It's for seismic exploration. Now, what is seismic exploration, you may ask? And you may. You may ask. I give you permission, so go ahead and ask. Stop interrupting. Seismic exploration utilizes sound waves to visualize subsurface rock layers and identify prospective areas where crude oil or natural gas deposits may exist. And I thought a sound wave is what happens when a ninja says hello. <laughs> what do you say, Piper? You want to show them how it works? Now engaging on-screen demonstration. Thumper trucks are used to send sound waves through the earth to help the oil and natural gas company determine the best place to drill. So, Piper, does the truck actually thump the earth's surface? And if so, is it like a sissy tap? Or would it dislodge, let's say, a ping pong ball that may or may not be stuck in my throat? <clears throat> Here you will see a line of thumper trucks pressing a vibrating plate onto the ground. This sends sound energy in the form of sound waves down into the earth. Kind of like the world's biggest vibrating smartphone. When my phone vibrates, I like to use it as a foot massager. I cramp up from time to time. As the sound waves encounter various rock formations in the subsurface, some of the sound energy is reflected or echoed back to the surface where it is recorded by special mechanical ears known as geophones. The sound waves travel at different speeds through different rock layers. Therefore, each different layer in the Earth returns a different echo back to the geophones. The receiver truck, like this one, records the signals the geophones pick up. All those signals are recorded as raw data. They will then be passed on to a team back at the office who utilize computers to process them in order to generate usable information. It takes a highly trained team of geophysicists and geologists using high-tech computer programs to interpret all the data generated from all those vibrations. This seismic data can then be used to create 3D geologic models of the subsurface rock layers. Now, we can rotate the 3D model and view it from all angles. You know, like Minecraft. 3D images can reveal faults in the Earth's crust, as well as the depths of various rock layers. These provide clues to the possible location of crude oil and natural gas accumulations. So what you're saying is thumping is the best way to locate potential drilling locations. Correct, Professor. It also allows workers to limit their environmental impact while exercising maximum efficiency. In other words, the best way to lessen an impact... ...is with a thump. You got it. Another mystery of the oil and natural gas world revealed. Vibrations discover where the oil and gas is hidden before we ever dig a single scoop of earth. That reminds me, I seem to have misplaced my bowl of cereal. Now you know just how important thumper trucks are to finding crude oil and natural gas. Until next time, I'm Leo, over and out. Well, scientists, I hope you've enjoyed our time together today and that you've gained some sound thinking throughout our investigations. <laughs>